At one point, you guys were all harmonizing. It sounded like a little bit. It's, it's like sync up a little bit. I was probably letting it rip last night. I stayed away a little bit. I tried. I know. That's why I'm clear over there. Ah, uh, we get more into bear country. Probably start snuggling a little bit more. Get a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> and I come around the turn and hit a root and just ate crap. And I was like, that's enough film and I don't want to be on film anymore. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It's pretty short lived. Yeah, it was. That's my film career. I don't want yeah. anything to do no. with that. Hi, guys. Here we are. This is the morning of our second day. I uh, got a little chilly last night. It was uh, a little surprising. But uh, today, our end goal is kind of Stanley. We need to get there for gas, uh, reload on snacks. Uh, not really sure what's ahead of us. We're kind of hearing it's an easier day. But uh, definitely know the scenery is going to change, and that's what we're excited for. So uh, we'll see you then. Let's do it. Oh yeah, welcome to Idaho. Just really wish it wasn't so smoky. Wow! Pretty sweet. Yeah. What Gotta you get my sea legs under me. You still see? feeling a little wobbly. <laughs> but nah, it's good. It's pretty. Too bad it's smoky. I mean, it's gorgeous country. <laughs> I forgot about that. Glamour shots by Deb. Yep. We are in Idaho. That's <laughs> true. Hey now, easy. <laughs> That's Charles' hometown. You I tell everyone. I tell everyone it sucked here. Don't go here. This video will help your cause. Yeah, yeah I'm sure of it. <laughs> Who actually got this whole adventure ride vibe going? Well, Ray got the adventure vi vibe going by buying his old clapped out KLR 650. And then once we all got him, we knew we needed to do a ride. Uh, I'm betting it was Ray's idea to do LA too. Yes, it was. Yeah, we thought it'd be a good idea to leave uh, the shop in January. And uh, yeah, we thought better of it in the future. Our first adventure ride, first time camping off the bikes or anything, and we had gear we'd never tested before, and a lot of it was pretty crappy, and we decided to go do, to ride all the way to LA in the winter time to test it. We didn't camp off the bikes. We hoteled we not? that trip. No, we hotel. Do you remember uh, we... Well, we still I... packed all our luggage. I mean, we still had to pack everything. Yeah, we just didn't have tents and stuff like that. Okay. But I had helped plan trips for summer rides and didn't even think about the days being shorter. So every day we ended up putting about three, four hours of night riding in, which was awful, sometimes more than that. That's why I don't get a lot, I'm not allowed to plan trips anymore. <laughs> Eric's the trail master. The thing that stuck out to me is all the luggage and, and even like tail bags and boxes. I mean, we had hard boxes and bags from Walmart and we like destroyed everything. We learned real quick why good gear is important. Yeah, for sure. It was a cool ride though, the, the, the concept of it because we were, uh, we were going to the LA Stadium, Dodger Stadium to watch the first Supercross there. 
and all that part was super cool it just was you know it's just learning how to adventure ride and and allowing yourself enough time and options and and everything else that's i mean we learned so much on that one ride oh, what was yeah. it was it was it about two thousand miles yeah it's pretty close to two thousand yeah the first camp out ride was phoenix oh yeah first time we did hooked on phoenix we just were doing it for fun and that was when we decided to camp off the bikes. We had like Walmart tents and I had a big old red Walmart bag on the back. Looked like I was delivering pizza. It was crazy. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> what would you guys say your most memorable moment was from it long way to LA? Uh, uh, what? Watching the death the... ride to Tonopah? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Watching the luggage cartwheel down the hard luggage cartwheel down the, the highway. Was well, that the same <laughs> ride that you uh, lost your side frame with Colts? Yep. No, that yeah. Was, oh yeah, it was. Yeah. Yep. I was out in the Chocolate Mountains in uh, between Havasu and uh, Salton Sea. Salton Sea. Yeah, we had to tie the frame back together with poly strap. We could rob. We robbed all we could off all the bags, and then Justin's brother Mick. He had to ride my bike and I rode his another 100 miles before we could get to bed. What did we get into Havasu, like one o'clock in the morning? Yeah, like 10 minutes before in and out closed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it was a good idea. We should have just done like 300 miles instead of 2,000. <laughs> Stanley and get some nice lunch. Why were you holding me up? You're going so slow. <laughs> Just around the corners. <laughs> well, we're making pretty good time. We're probably about 30 miles outside of Stanley. So that's gonna make it a perfect place for lunch and some fuel. And uh, we'll sit down and decide where we're gonna go from there. So this next section is a pretty good chunk of pavement. It's all slab all the way into Stanley. So we cleaned up our uh, shields really good, make sure we've got really good vision so we can check out all the cool scenery and we'll be to Stanley pretty quick. Okay. <laughs> I think I didn't think my butt was gonna get so sore. Now I'm ready for some lunch. That's what I think. The gas is just swirling around and the gas tank really pushed hard on that outside peg. Just like make your foot completely off the inside peg and fill with the you'll be able to Okay, so we need to get gas right here for sure. Um, and then we're gonna go out of town here on 21. We're gonna go up and we're actually gonna end up hitting the, oh, what is it called, Loon Creek kind of loop. It uh, goes up by the wilderness. But um, it's slab, we probably have about 18 miles of slab. And then we'll jump on dirt. No, no slab. No slab? I'm just kidding, we can do slab. Oh my gosh, it's just a little bit. 
But anyway, so we'll, we'll grab the dirt and then we'll be dirt all the way into Chalice. Um, pretty mm -hmm. decent road. Our, our loon little loop is, is maybe a little tighter, but looking from, from space, it actually looks pretty looks good. good from space. Yep, yep, okay, exactly. Test Wait, is a test. And I've got a question though, is how happy are you that we're ahead of schedule? <laughs> As the trail boss, <laughs> you've got to be like, just, this is like Christmas. I am stoked that we're ahead of schedule because uh, it seems like we're always fighting, you know, especially when we're filming. We're always trying to get caught up and catch up and, and where there's no expectations. Uh, who even knows if I'm caught up or not? So I am stoked. Do you think it's closed because of the fire or what's going on? So I'm not exactly sure. So it looks like it's about maybe 15 miles from here to our turnoff. And if we're, if we're at mile 127 right here, should we go try it? Okay, let's try it up there and check it out. So here's the update of where we're heading. We're heading up towards the north west side of Idaho. There's a lot more forest fires up this way. Supposedly part of this highway is closed and they're doing a pilot car. That looks like it's up here. So hopefully we don't have to wait too long or we don't have to turn around. We'll see what happens. Fire activity ahead. Yeah, you can see the fire happening up on the hills over here. So so yeah, looking at this, we got a fire right here and we, we thought we could maybe sneak around it. It's actually a really new fire and we just actually talked to the Forest Service and they were saying that, that they just had a flare up and they were running a pilot car through here but then they've decided to close it. And, and looking around, we're not seeing an easy way to get around to get back to our route. And so we're probably just gonna backtrack back through Stanley over to Yankee Fork and uh, pick up the loop again there. It's too bad because this looks like a lot of fun and Charles has been on it before and he was saying that it's a pretty cool little loop road too. So, but ah, it's all part of adventure riding in Idaho for sure. It's a bummer. Good. Yeah, you guys ready? We're ready. All Let's right. do it. Ah, the Salmon River. Beautiful. So all this rock's been sifted through for gold. That's wild. So this is my good friend, Charles Rhodes. Um, he is, what did we decide? assistant trail boss on this ride. He's done a lot of uh, exploring up in this part of the country and he's helped us out a ton on the, the routes. But so he's also an expert on some of these, these cool things on the side of the road. And it just so happens, Charles knows all about this dredge. I don't know if I'd go so far, Eric, as to say I know all about it, but I've been here four or five times and taken the tour three or four times. And so like you said, when we come up, we see all these rock piles up the canyon and you wonder how did they do that in the 40s with this so the way this thing works it scoops all those rocks up in the front with that big bucket and then it pulls them inside and runs them through a trommel and separates them out and then the big rocks just land on the belt and come out the back so you can see it sticking out the back and then with this dredge floating in here they had cables running off of each corner and then they would just had a winch and they would just winch it over and they just kept winching it over, 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 and then they drop it back down and winch back. And I think that thing can dig like 30 some odd feet below the surface. Holy cow. And so as they winched it back and forth, it would just lay out these ribbons of rock. So if you look at the satellite view, it's just all these arches. So to just sit in a pond like that and arch it back and forth. Okay. So I think, what did it say over there? $11 million worth of gold. I know, and they ran all that with three people. Three people. Yeah. Holy cow. Well, 
Thanks, Charles. Mm -hmm. Well, what's up for this? Since you got the trail boss and the assistant trail boss. They had a town down at the bottom here, Sunbeam, that supported the dredge. Mm -hmm. So it was a little village and they supported the dredge the four or five years they were dredging here. And then there's another town, a Custer, a mile up the road. It's an old ghost town from when they were mining and there was a stamp mill up here. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going up the up the road and we're gonna head over to Chalice. Uh, probably not too far away from Chalice at this point. Uh, it sounds like the road's pretty good shape. So yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do after we get there. Depends what time of day it is. We might even get a motel in Chalice, who knows? <laughs> so if, if we would have took our regular route out of Stanley up to where we got turned around for the fire, we would have came out just right up this canyon over here and come right down. And so we're basically back on course now. Cool. Blacksmith, huh? That's cool. Wow. I know I had to look it up on YouTube to see what those things really look like. They're pretty crazy. That's an old Alice Chalmers dozer. Well, that was a cool little town. <laughs> we have extra time. <laughs> well, let's go look. See if we can find a cool spot over there. But beyond here, the camp spots aren't designated. Wait, not sure. He says there's a side road and there might be something over there, but we don't. Yeah, this is probably the only one we can have a fire in. Yeah, if it's not developed, we can't have a fire, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. So right now we're we're trying to decide if if we should just stop here. So we're about an hour away from Chalice. Um, we could push on into Chalice, stay in a motel tonight, but we're kind of we're kind of digging camping. Um, this is a developed campground, and so we can have a fire and a developed campground with a firing. Um, we normally don't stop this early. This is not our our normal operating procedure, but uh, we're kind of feeling it, and so we're thinking we might just stay here. All right. What if the wind blew real hard and a tree branch fell and killed me? So I'm gonna sleep out away from the tree. Yeah. But if the tree fell, you gotta die or something. <laughs> he was telling me one time he's camping with his buddies and the forest ranger comes up or a sheriff or something like that, and starts talking to him and he got talking, he forgot that the can was in there and it exploded. And it's got all over him and the forest ranger <laughs> or the sheriff. It's a loud And the forest boom, service guy too. or sheriff or whatever sure. sitting there. Uh, I just dry cleaned this uniform. Oh well. Head down the canyon, we're done. So me and my buddy threw our can of SpaghettiOs in there. Head down the canyon, right? We get down to the parking lot. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> And then we're at, then when I was 18, we're at Baker Hot Springs, and these nudist this nudist couple was hanging out at the hot springs, and he'd get out to play with the fire, and you can only imagine <laughs> bending over. <laughs> we were just like, oh my gosh! Oh my God, feel bad naked. Hot dog roast. Bad and they naked. and they invited us into their RV for hot chocolate, and we're like, no thanks. <laughs> and so we left a can of spaghettios in that fire and left. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Oh. I swear, I don't know what it is with hot springs and bad naked. It draws in a special type. But we need a different conversation if we're talking about naked people. <laughs> I don't think that's going on your channel, is it? Wait, wait, which one you got? A turkey dinner. Ooh, I have one of those. It's no good. He's going to be waking me up. It might be the one I left at home. So yeah. far, I didn't wait last Yeah. Time. 
But you got too much in there, don't you? It's like a paste, isn't it? Don't ruin it for me. I'm really enjoying this. Hold it up. Let's look. Oh my God! <laughs> Holy! <coughs> I'll bet you don't. You'd like rather it. have give me crap. Why are you riding the brakes so much? Because we're doing 80, and all I can see is that trailer right there. Ha, 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 ha.